we got here at the house, we're actually going to leave the door open uh, because I'm going to be making so much cutting and noise and everything. So we got our door off. One of the first things that we uh, did was you need to come out here with a square or something. Man, I'm about to bust my butt out here. And you need to check to make sure your door frame is square in the hole because the door was uh, sagging a little. So the gap was bigger on this side than over there. And upon inspection, the door frame is square like I figured it would be. I figured that the manufacturer would have it where it's square. So all it is is that the door is just wore out and it has like shifted, it's sagging. So we're going to put some extra supports in here. I'll show you how to do this. But we're going to get this thing broke to down. get started, normally your end pieces are just screwed on. That's how mine is and that's how Mike said his was. So you're going to take your screws out around the edge. You'll have screws all around the edge. And then these side pieces should come straight off. And then that's going to leave us with just a wooden uh, frame with the uh, metal skin on the other side. So your plywood is um, held on with some staples and some glue. They run a little bit of glue drizzle, some useless glue on around there. The, um, you, just, you just work your staples out, pull your plywood off. I'm sorry, it's thinking. Um, the bottom of this is rotted. Now, originally I was not gonna replace this. I was just gonna scab in another two by four. I was just gonna cut this out right here and cut this out and scab in a little two by four. But now that I've took it apart, like, and I realized that all of this structure is literally just held together with all these staples. So that's what they put all this together with, including, you know, the plywood is just these sorry st staples. And they don't really have no strength to it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to replace this bottom with a two by four, an actual just solid two by four. I understand it's literally double or triple the weight. Um, I'm going to have to probably go get another one out the shed because this one's not long enough. But that will allow me to cut out pretty much all the rot right there. And then we will uh, scab this together either with a little 90 bracket on the inside to add some strength or I might drill a pocket, a long pocket screw through there. Um, and then on this end, we will probably, uh, let's see here, we'll leave that and then we'll come through the side and drill another pocket screw in on that side. Um, and then we'll just cut, we'll take our fine saw and we'll just come in here and cut this one a little shorter and leave this support there that they already have in here even though like it's literally look at that like you can tell it's boop, not even square so uh sorry stuff but we're gonna get this bottom piece in and then um let's see here we need to get our bolts out and then we'll probably go ahead and measure out for our plywood and we can get our plywood cut now this is the time where if you stop and run the lows and go get you some more insulation foam. I don't even know what's going on with this trailer. It's like half the walls had foam insulation in them. The other and half did not. Um, because when we got it, if you look back at the main video, the walls weren't off of it. It's just only certain areas I have found insulation foam. So I don't know. I don't know how they build these things or why, you know, only some of it has insulation in it, but I am, I did not insulate everything else so I'm not gonna insulate the door. We're not gonna add nothing to the door. We're just gonna leave in there these couple of little pieces that were in there doing absolutely nothing. And we're gonna throw this thing back together. So um, maybe on the next trailer, we'll do that. The only thing that sucks about this is that you're gonna have to rip your two by four down um, because the width is a lot narrower. The pieces that are in there are more narrow than the actual two by four. So, uh, that sucks because uh, I get tired of dragging everything out on the weekend. I've already dragged chop saw out, skill saw for the Luan, chop saw for the 2x4 because I didn't want to get this all cut all crooked with a skill saw. Yes, you can take a speed square, hold a speed square on there, run your skill saw down the side of it, get a straight cut. I do have a construction background, but uh, I brought chop saw around here. So now let's go get the skill saw, set our depth, I meant table saw, and let's rip this board down to the right thickness. <sighs> and then maybe finally put it in. Let's drag all the saws out again this weekend. All right, so before I cover that up, we come in here and rip our two by four down for the bottom and cut these back. We're just gonna leave this one uh, loose because when we screw this down, that will tie all that together. 
And then that one, we just drilled a bigger hole so that we could set the screw in there so that it's, you know, the screw head is probably like all the way up to here. And then it goes into there. And then on this side, we just did the, you know, set two screws in that way into that. So that bottom piece is nice and solid. So we've cut this piece. Harper's out here blowing in a pipe. And we're going to uh, put this on there and screw this down. All right, so what I decided to do on this side was yeah, they had wood on this side also. And this area right here was really rotted. So after I took off the metal plate and everything, you can actually see where obviously somebody tried to get into this trailer or something happened at some point because that's where the lock goes and it was tore all to pieces, which we're cutting a new piece of aluminum, but there's what was left of the wood that was behind all that where water had been getting in and messing everything up. So I've come in here and I've cut just that section out, cleaned this up the best I could, you know. Um, I could technically take a grinder to it, but I think that's good enough. And I am gonna take my scrap piece of Luon that I have right there on the ground from the other side and just patch that in. So if I was to replace the whole sheet on this side, it would eat up my another sheet of Luon. And I think it's like $30 a sheet. So I'm just trying to, again, be budget-minded. And all of this stuff, for the most part, is solid. It has a little rot down here. But uh, you're not really getting much strength from this. And my, I'm going to just fill in that one piece instead of remaking the whole thing. One thing I had to do was, you can see right here, this plywood used to be to the edge of that 2x4. You can see how the gap's big here and then how it goes to nothing there. That's how our sagging door issue how we had our sagging door issue. Um, so I'm sure over time, everything just twisted from the weight of the door and sagged. So I have come on this side and completely loosened this up, left that side stapled and intact, and then shifted my frame up to my wood on the bottom side because we just cut this side square. So that way my door frame is square and then we will reattach this wood in the strong spots. Um, there's how it's put together, there's staples. So you'll have to pry to staples out of them so i'm gonna get this uh, little strip cut and get it in and then we're gonna go ahead and cut our pocket out for where our uh, latch goes our door handle um and keep it moving all right now for screws i was using these okay these little number eight three and a quarters but when they would go in then they would free spin because they're just not really biting like i like i like stuff to really bite down so I've switched to sheetrock screws. I love sheetrock screws. Now, the only problem with sheetrock screws is that uh, they're not uh, weather resistant. So if they were to get wet, they can uh, rust and break. But we don't plan for this door to get wet, hopefully, or it's soaked. If it gets wet in a rain shower, that's one thing. But uh, continuous exposure to the elements will rust and break sheetrock screws. So these are obviously uh, too long. So what I have done is just come in here basically and put them in at an extreme angle. And sometimes they actually grab even all the way through to the other side. Now there's a couple that I think are poking through and I'll just take the little cutoff wheel and zip them off. Um, but these things, I mean, when these bit, I mean, they sucked down in there. I mean, they, they freaking bit dude. So, uh, she's solid screws are not going to come out. I've got it screwed off. I left the staples down that side. Um, I'm going to cut this pocket out. I've already cut the other side out right there. So I'm going to cut this side out. I'll probably flip it over and do that and then screw the other side back off and then flip it back over this side and get the metal cut and get the metal put on it. And then we can start putting our frame back together and uh, get our door handle set in it. All right, so got our aluminum cut out. And if you're new to the channel and you're just finding this video, uh, all the skins that we have replaced on this, we're actually using uh, the same stuff they do like gutters and uh, metal roofing with. I think this may be gutter uh, material. I have a buddy that owns a uh, roofing company and uh he hit me up with a bunch or he let me get a bunch of scraps for you know a really really good deal uh i think it was like 100 bucks for enough to do this whole entire trailer and some of them are wider than others different colors but we're going to be painting this whole trailer if you followed along where we're done so uh he even and then i went and bought these back from him from a little thicker gauge where he bent them in his uh brake uh for the corners so if you have a roofing company nearby or a gutter company uh, feel free to stop in because uh, these people even sell scraps to you know just random people so stop in and ask them if they have any scraps tell them you're doing a trailer project and uh, you might be surprised to find that uh, they might have something for you so uh, we've got our pocket cut out where our door handle will go in 
Uh, all I did was copy it off the old one, so I did cheat on that. We'll move on. I think that's pretty much uh, good for this. And I think I'm going to move on to putting my um, pieces around there. I'm going to see if I got some liquid nails. I might run some beads of liquid nail down this just to help this uh, stick to it. But I don't know if it really, I don't know if it really will stick, honestly. I don't think it really will. And the stuff from the factory, they didn't have nothing glued on it. Well, it looks like they had a little bit of spray glue, but not much. So I don't know. I might put some on there just so it's better than nothing. And then uh, get these side pieces uh, clamped back on. I wasn't going to worry with no liquid nails, but I forgot that I did have this 3M product in here. It's just general trim adhesive, um, high strength, lightweight fabrics and carpets, heat and moisture resistant. So shorts not designed for that, but I had like half of a can left. So I decided I would just go ahead and burn that up, spray it all over it, throw it on there. If it does something cool, if it doesn't do anything, then right, oh well. The reason why I decided not to put liquid nails down is because you would be gluing to the Luon, which the Luon has no strength. The, you know, that thin plywood is there. There's no real structure to the door at all. It's not like there's studs in there you know, that Luan's attached to. So you'd be attaching it, you'd be attaching a flimsy piece of uh, metal to a flimsy sheet of plywood. So it's just, I don't see it adding any strength. Of course, anytime any uh, multiple items are glued together, of course you're gonna get strength from that. That's pretty common sense, um, you know? So do with your project as you please. But, um, you know, the frame around the perimeter is going to pinch the metal on where the metal literally, literally cannot go nowhere. And we're going to be screwing through, you know, uh, well, we're not going to be screwing through the face, but we're going to be screwing into the uh, frame and the ends of it. So, I mean, everything's just going to be sandwiched together. And I just, I don't see it going together. Hey, if it messes up, I'll take it apart and fix it. But this is pretty much how they had it done from the factory because they had like no glue on it hardly at all. It was there, but it just, it wasn't a ton of it. So... I think we'll be perfectly fine. And what you're gonna want to do with uh, your pieces is, cause they're gonna be a little bit hard to get on, they can be. So you wanna make sure you take this edge, not your outer edge, your inner edge is what I'm gonna do. And you sit it right here at an angle like that, okay? So it should be like this when it's installed. So you're just gonna roll it at a 45 and you're gonna take a hammer and just lightly tap this edge. And what I'm using is a rubber mallet. So what that's gonna do is just bring the edge out just a little. You're just gonna go down and tap the whole edge, bring it out a little. It's gonna help it get on a little. Mine was super tight. And then what I have done is um, I'm using these screws. These are exterior, okay? So they are number 10s. And I'm using drill bit size 5 16 And all I'm gonna do is go through here and drill a hole that way it countersinks it and then suck these things up so that this trim is on there extremely tight sucked up to the wood the metal's locked in your skin's locked in and this thing is going to be better than it was from the factory i'm actually switching to a 332nd drill bit because some of this the force of pulling the trim up tight you know it's aluminum so you want to spread the hole open so i wanted a hole a little bit smaller so just switch to that um, this over here where it's beat up right here is being a complete uh, bear to get on uh, so basically what I've done is flipped it upside down as you can see because this side the other side your lip is a little wider than this side so I'll get that lip on first and then come in here with this putty knife and basically help walk this um, walk this piece of trim up over top of this you know and tap it on and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do my holes as I go because I've basically done the holes put the drill bit in a little or the screw in a little and kind of help keep pulling it up with the screw so that when you're hammering it's not just like bouncing off so uh and I think because the new wood I put on might be a touch thicker that it's actually uh, uh it's putting up a little bit of a fight but slowly but surely got half of it done got that side done so I'm gonna keep getting at it well, I have fought this thing and fought this thing and fought this thing I can tell you one thing that I have learned is the Luan that I use from Home Depot or Lowe's the thin plywood stuff is a little thicker than what they use from the trailer manufacturer, which is mind blowing in itself because this is thin enough that I put on there. But the area that I did the patch with the Luan on the other side, that puts uh, one new layer of Luan and another layer, so that's two, versus the rest of the door is one new layer and then the old layer. 
that layer was a complete nightmare to get on because the uh, distance in the flange is let's say this much and then the new stuff is this much so uh, it does not look pretty at all on the inside it's there I'm about to uh, wash these hands up so I don't get it all over everything and more than I already did and then test fit it on the trailer to see if uh, it actually closes in the door frame because now I'm afraid in that one area I've had to hammer it up so much that it might not clear but hopefully there's enough clearance there uh, besides that turned out okay uh, definitely going around putting screws in you know the side right here biting into some wood definitely helps pull that trim up really good way better than they had uh, they literally had two pieces on the bot two screws on the bottom two screws on the top and then a couple down the sides like it was t it's terrible the uh lack of quality that uh these trailers have when you start actually breaking them down and working on them so i'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what i ended up with real fast and then i'm gonna wash my hands up and see if this thing goes in the hole on the trailer if it does then um i can take it back off <laughs> Well, I might leave it on for this afternoon and take a break, but it has to come back off so I can take the frame out so that I can replace the skins on the side of the trailer now. So uh, never end, and I'll be glad for this door to finally go on there and stay on there. So here is the area, first off, that is pretty uh, beat up. As you can see down, it it is like bulged out a little bit right there. So um, hopefully it still goes on. It's the inside of the door. This is actually the bottom. Uh, all this is going to get painted fresh. Um, you know, if it, if it goes on there and stays on there, you could always come and trim it out. I don't know if it bothers you. It don't, it don't bother me, man. This is a budget trailer. Uh, besides that, everything else, this is how it should look. Uh, I've got screws in it. That's when I was using the bigger hole. And as you can see, the screw eventually pulled through. Um, but yeah, this side over here was a little funky going on. I think that uh, I should have maybe not pulled this one up so tight and left it out. If you ever done trim in a house, you kind of know sometimes you have to cheat one side out uh, more than the other side. But besides that, uh, everything, everything looks, uh, looks good, man. So, uh, I'm going to, uh, first off, just go sit it in the hole, make sure it goes in the hole. And then if it does, then we'll start messing with the latch, but we can do that on the, on the trailer. This side was tore up from open and closing so much. So I do have this little piece of metal that's flopping right now. Um, if everything goes smooth on there, I'll probably just cut this off to right here, or I'll just drill a little one eighth hole and put a couple screws in it like that so it don't look so bad. But uh, I just wanna make sure it fits now. All right, so I just got my piece up, fixed that little area right there, and then went ahead and put the uh, trim back across the top. Went ahead and put the sealant back on it. It said, don't um, apply when you're expecting rain within 24 or 48 hours. Um, skies are blue, uh, looks nice behind, behind the clouds. So uh, we went ahead and put it on there. Um, hopefully the product is better than the people that invented it say it is. And hopefully, um, instead of it not being rain ready in 24, 48 hours, hopefully it's rain ready here and, uh, whenever it decides to sprinkle. So we'll see how that goes. We got to rebrush out the whole roof anyway. I just wanted to get some stuff behind that trim and that's just what I had at the house. So. Oh, we're just going to hope for the, the best. That's what we're going to do. So uh, weather forecast is showing like 13 to 30 percent all the way through tomorrow lunch. So um, it's pretty hot, but um, maybe it'll hold out. Maybe it'll set up enough to not mess up. I don't know. Who knows? Let's keep getting at it. As you can see, the rain got the best of me this afternoon, but I did get the door on. So tomorrow we'll start back on some other stuff off the checklist. I got the door latch in. I just haven't done the um, striker little square piece inside the jam where it catches. So I started it and then it come up a freaking frog strangler. So um, yeah, that's gonna be it for this afternoon. But I think it turned out good. You know, I think it looks, uh, looks good. Our gap around the top is all correct our gaps down the side look good um, i haven't finished screwing anything off so i haven't finished putting the screws in there i don't have the screws in all of the holes yet so i'll finish all that out no more but that's how to redo your uh door for the most part you know i gotta finish out the inside paint it and all that but everything's smooth so i'll get out here tomorrow and finish up all of this stuff it was latching a second ago but we'll just leave it like that for tonight 
and uh, we'll get back on this thing in the morning. So make sure to smash that bell button right now to turn on notifications and go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. That way you can stay up to date with all of our projects and every video that we post you can get notified about. And uh, I'll catch you on the next update. Thanks, y'all.